Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And when Jesus passed over again by ship into the other side, they, they, they said, Jesus, get out of here. And he goes. Much people gathered unto him. Here's this multitude again. And he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, the, the Jewish assembly, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, Now, if Jesus was not God, because the Jehovah Witnesses will say Jesus never proclaimed to be God. If Jesus allowed people to worship him by falling at his feet, then, excuse me, but Jesus is a liar. Because the Bible says the only one you're to praise, you're to worship, is God alone. When you fall down and, and, and worship the Pope, that, that's an idol, that's wrong. That's just a man. Jesus is not just a man. He's God. He accepts and receives the honor of God that we saw previously. Go tell what the Lord has done. And he went and told him what Jesus has done. Thomas says, my Lord, my God, and there is no rebuke. I can rebuke the Jehovah Witnesses, but there is no rebuke by Jesus. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death, kind of terminal. I pray thee, I, I seek you, I'm asking the petition. And that's what prayer is. You're, it's a petition. It would be, I ask thee. The Bible is self interpreting. You don't need no scholar, you don't need no Hebrew, you don't need no Greek. Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed. All right. So there's something wrong with her. She's at a point of death and she may be healed, and she shall live. So evidently, the, the, the implication is that this is a serious ailment of this girl. I want you to lay hands on her, want her to be healed, and by that she shall live. There will be no cause to say she shall live. He could let she may be healed, period. But that she has lived, that she shall live is implication that she's the point of death. The illness is terminal. I know that's a word that goes with cancer, but I'm not saying she has cancer. I'm just saying that, you know, there is no hope. Today, she, we would say she's being costless. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. You know, elbow here, knee here, boom. Okay, I mean, it's just, you know, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. A certain woman, now this is not a parable, this is a certain woman, unnamed, but a certain woman. Got it? It's not figurative, it's not a parable. It's not a story. It's a certain woman. Which had initial blood 12 years. Now, this is called, if I may cheat. Menorrhagia. Okay. I think it's menorrhagia. Now, when you do an internet search, 12 years she's bleeding. Okay. When you do an internet search, you will find that they will tell you immediately, immediately, go to the ER, get doctor help, call 911. And that all the things I looked up that I saw online would point to this metagegia which is a term which is menstrual. Now, maybe, I mean, issue of blood, maybe she had a, a open wound. 
Maybe she had uh, something that wouldn't heal, wouldn't bleed. Okay, it's possible. And today you would go to a wound care. You would see somebody like that. There's a possibility that you have an ulcer or an ulcer. Most of the things I did in the internet search today, I tried different internet searches, pointed to the female anatomy that she is bleeding. And I, I had I did have the reference here somewhere in the law. And let's run through these references real quick. All right, where am I circled here? J. J. I know I looked it up. I marked it. All right, J. My footnotes here, my Bible. And let me give you the right one. Somebody shrunk my Bible down. I can't really see it. H I J K. H I. H I. Probably, all right, it would be Leviticus 15, I believe 25 to 31. And it talks about a woman who, who, who's bleeding. She's, she has her menstrual cycle in Leviticus. She's come to the end of her cycle. She's unclean. She's got to bring an offering to be clean. And it brings up to the fact is, what if she does not stop bleeding? She's unclean and describes all the issues with issues and blood being unclean. This woman, according to the Jewish law, she's unclean. Her husband can't sleep with her. Her husband can't touch her. He can't kiss her. She's unclean. She goes in a doctor's office and sits in the waiting chair. That chair is unclean. She gets up on the bed or whatever you want to call the table in the examining room. That's unclean, but they came to the house. Twelve years. Notice the, notice the word twelve. And it had suffered many things of many physicians. So this bleeding brings about many ailments, many symptoms, many hardships for her, whatever it is. And then, like I said, psycho, let's say she did have a husband. One day, you know, she got her period and then, or a cut or a bruise or an open wound. And from that day forth, what if she's got a husband? What if she's got children? Grandchildren? Or she lives home with mom and dad? Her entire life. Aren't you glad you're not under the law? I know a missionary that was one of the island nations. And in the island nations, they have special huts. And when it comes to that time for the women, they live in those huts. They don't, they don't go home. And if this is the woman, that would be her permanent residence. Unclean. And she's been to many doctors, physicians. They couldn't help her. And has spent all that she had. She put all her money into the doctors and got nothing. Things haven't changed, nothing new under the sun. And was nothing bettered, there's a word for you, but rather grew worse. <laughs> there you go. It's getting worse and worse. I mean, you know she's got to go into the, to a frame of anemia. She's losing iron. Would it be menstrual or scar, whatever it is. <laughs> It's making her body worse and it's making her family life worse, whatever kind of family life worse. And notice she's going to meet Jesus. But everything is going on right now. She has not come to God. 
She has not come to Jesus. She has put her all in all to men. Now Jesus said, they that are whole have no need of physician, but they that are sick. Okay, you go to a doctor. But you better seek God and you better seek Jesus first. I mean, if, if you're doing something and an and a axe or a saw chops off your hand and arm or cuts your leg wide open, you, you've got a, you got an artery, it's shooting blood. Don't get down there in a the prayer meeting. Call 911 and while you're waiting, pray to God then. When you get to the hospital, pray for God then. You don't reject the hospital. Don't reject blood infusions because of religion. But Man alone is not going to help you. You say, well, I went to a doctor and I was completely healed and I had cancer. I was, put, I was completely healed and I, uh, you're going to die? If you die, man's done nothing for you. Well, you know, you're a Christian, you die. No, 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 no. I'm absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's what I am. And when she had heard of Jesus afterwards, came in the press, that means a lot of people, behind. So here's this multitude of people. She comes up behind. She didn't parachute in. She didn't break the roof. She comes up behind to touch his garment. All she wants to do it's reached down to another place says, touch his hand. She doesn't want to interrupt Jesus. She doesn't want to stop the thing. She just wants to go up and touch him. That's all the faith she has. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. That's her faith. Nothing more. Touch his clothes. I'll be healed and I go home. No one will ever know. Except my family, my husband, and the doctors to go get checked. Because remember, if she's been made whole, she's if she's Jewish, which I'm going to take that she is, she's got to go to the priest, and the priest is going to examine her. Then she's got to bring her offering according to the Levitical law. So a healing, though she goes up to Jesus and going to touch his, the hem of his clothes, I'm going to do it secretly. If what she believes he's going to be made whole, oh, there's nothing secret because she's got to do a whole bunch of things. And when she runs to the temple and says, hey, look at me, I I'm no longer bleeding, they're going to say one thing. How? Jesus. Remember John the blind, uh, the, the blind man? Who opened your eyes? Jesus. And that guy, in the long run, his family denied him. In the long run, he answered, and he... Ended up getting kicked out of the synagogue, getting kicked out of the temple. There'll be a ruckus. What if her husband or her father or some? Well, you know what? We're going to stick with the Pharisees. We're going to stick with the religious group. Uh, we don't want to be ostracized from the temple and all that or synagogue. And, you know, we're going to reject Jesus. <laughs> this is no, she's thinking it's going to be a quiet thing if she's Jewish. Now, if she's, if she's a Gentile, all right, she's healed and go back to her people. But we know she's Jewish. Hold on. Straightway, the fountain of her blood. Now, fountain. You know what a fountain is, right? This is not a trickle. Of, and this is why I say it's probably not a wound. This is not, okay, we got it stopped and bleeding. And, you know, she rubs it while she's sleeping. Oh, man, I can't get it sleeping. And we, my daughter had that thing, and they got a a uh, a powder that you put in, and it stops bleeding. That's not the case. The Holy Spirit that wrote the scriptures said, "Mark, yes, Holy Spirit." All right, straightway the fountain of her blood. All right, straightway the fountain of her blood. You know what a fountain is? A gush. <laughs> and that, listen, I, I've been married to two women. I got a daughter. When it comes to that time, and I'm, I would say, gush. That's like, okay. I don't know anything about it. Gush. Um, I'm flowing. Okay. Yep. 
Get flown. But we are beyond her, if it is, and I'm not saying that, but we are beyond her menstrual strike cycle. I mean, within two weeks, the cycle is usually over. I forget. I don't know what that is. She's 12 years. 12 years, the fountain of her blood. She's got to be taking iron pills. I don't know what kind of medical procedures they had for this kind of thing. I don't know how often a woman bleeds. I'm not a woman. But I would assume every time she changed the cloth, it was bloodied. The fountain of her blood was dried up. Another place says stanched. She felt in her body that she had been she was healed of that plague. Plague. Okay, maybe it was some kind of thing on the arm or leg or I'm going to tell you honestly, honestly, I don't know. I'm not gonna possess a no. I'm a doctor of theology, but I ain't gonna. I'll tell you one thing I do know. Where it was 13 years she was bleeding, that's serious enough. And by the evidence I looked up today, I didn't see anywhere in my search where there was a wound, an open wound that would bleed so long without every website telling you, call 911, get medical attention, apply pressure, you need a tourniquet. I tried every keyword I could, and it kept coming back to the menstrual. Okay? Is it something else? It could be. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself virtue, power, had gone out of him. He turned about, and here he is, he's walking with all these people that throng at him. He turns, because remember she come from behind? He turns and said, who touched my clothes? Now you figure if he was wearing a robe or something like that, you figure that part would be dragging on the ground. And if he just touched it, I mean, she didn't pull it, she didn't rip it, she didn't tug it. She wants to make it as indiscreet as possible. So just a little, little dabble, do you? <laughs> That's what her faith was. And we'll learn that this is Peter and the other uh, Gospels. His disciples said unto him, now, now watch their attitude. Thou seest the multitude thronging thee. <laughs> Another place I believe it says us. <laughs> Elbow in the face, <laughs> elbow in the rib, step on my foot, push me over. And you worried about who touched my clothes. Look at the edge. Someone touched your clothes, Jesus? You know, the Catholic Church paints this whole picture, uh, you know, just a bunch of fruity tooty guys is hanging around. I'm going to tell you something about Jesus. I'm going to tell you something about the disciples, especially the fishermen. They're walking up and down mountains like it's nothing. I guarantee Jesus is a short Jew. And I guarantee, now I can't prove it 100%, I guarantee with the atmosphere of this, the guy has muscles. And the disciples are like, oh, oh my ribs. And can you imagine, I mean, in the entire life of Jesus, you're reading about multitudes, all right? Get the fact is from Matthew 5. All the time there's multitudes. Oh, 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 I don't know what this part of my body is, Jesus, but come on. And then, you know, get mad at someone again. Well, you do that again, I'm going to. It would have been Peter. Then. Hey, who stepped on my sandal? And you bend over for something, they push you over. 
Come on, let's get the reality of the Bible. Let's get rid of the bunny rabbits and the dyed eggs. There he goes. Let's get the atmosphere of what we learn of today's scripture. They're getting approached, they're getting prod, they're getting hit, they're getting stepped on, they're boom. And other places in the gospel, we, well, you know, they're hungry, that send them away. Well, how much food do we have? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Really? We're going to feed them with, with four loaves of bread and two fish. Let's get rid of them, Jesus. <laughs> All right, that's the attitude. Can you imagine what the real, true attitude your pastor may be about you? Your lovey dovey pastor? How about the one that takes off on you and goes to other churches? How about the one? Okay, we only have a Sunday morning service. That's it. See you next Sunday. I, I called the church. I was looking for information, my family and all that. And I got the voicemail. This this is my cell phone number. Only call it if there's an emergency. Oh. And my first question is, I mean, we live by the hospital. It says emergency. My stupid first question, well, what's emergency? What's the difference between emergency and urgent? <laughs> Because I've gone into an emergency room. I sat there for three or four, eight, nine, twelve hours. I said, that's not an emergency. <laughs> Mine's more of an emergency. Okay? So look at the attitude. Learn the attitude of the 13, Jesus and his disciples. Every time you hear multitude. Have you ever been to a place where there's a lot of people and you've been thronged, you've been hit, you've been... And you try to stop for something, and next thing you know, you get plowed over. <laughs> so, thou say it, who touched me? Oh, come on. That's 30 people that just nailed me right now. <laughs> and we learned this Peter. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. <laughs> He's looking at her. He knows who it is. And we're going to do a we're going to do a Genesis three. And if you don't read the Old Testament, you don't pay attention to Bible. You're not going to see it. But the woman fearing, didn't Adam and Eve fears? Did they come to a realization? And then they made aprons, and the voice of the Lord came, and they feared and hid themselves. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her to heal and came and fell down before him. Here's another one falling down before him, worshiping him. In one afternoon. And told him all the truth. That's exactly what God wanted Adam to do. Adam, where art thou? <laughs> What'd you do? Well, you know that woman... What did you do? You know that serpent. Excuse me, ma'am. What's going on here? Well, you know, I, I had this bloody issue. I'm unclean, and I've been to the doctors. It's been going on for 12 years. If I could just touch the hem of your garment, I'd be healed. That's what God wanted Adam to do. That's what God wanted came to do. Where's your brother? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Okay. She confesses right away. God has healed her. You know what she does? The first thing she does, given the opportunity, she testifies. Not like Jesus didn't know. And he said unto her, ready, daughter. All right, she's Jewish. There you go. Thy faith has made thee whole. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. She's a Jew. Jews require signs. That's not necessary the church age. He's got a whole bunch of Jews. One in, Again, there's one in the elbow. <laughs> and here comes a miracle. You healed me. And behold of thy plague. And he backs it up. There's some kind of plague. Okay. 
Okay. So is it the 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 way of a woman? I don't know. I don't know if a woman would call that a plague. I mean, I think of plagues. I think of locusts and, you know, the COVID-19. Maybe to a woman she thinks it. But she didn't say it either. She said it, and Jesus said it, a plague. Did she get some kind of disease? Okay. So... I'm not going to say for sure because the Bible does not say for sure. And I'm not going to make the Holy Spirit say something he didn't say. I'm going to read room. It could be the woman's menstrual or it could be something a whole lot. While he had spank, there came from the ruler, Jairus, synagogue's house, certain which said, All right, here's that certain, So this is not a parable. This is not a, a picture. This is real people. Thy daughter's dead. So she was going to die. Why troublest thou the master, rabbi, not Messiah, any further? So the Jews today will say, you know, Jesus is not God. He was a he was a rabbi. He was a sorcerer. He was a good teacher. That's what they're saying when they say master is rabbi. Call no man rabbi, for one is is your master in heaven. Call no man your master, and that would be your secular kind of you know secret societies. And then Catholic, don't call no man your father. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of synagogue, that be Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. Belief in the Bible is essential from Genesis to Revelation. All right, so are you saved and going to heaven? Yes. Do you believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? No. Uh, got a problem. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confess meaning. Do you believe Jesus is God? No, you got a problem. Because Hebrews 11 says you got to believe who God is. Paul says to, to the Gentiles, he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. John says to the Jewish people, he said, <clears throat> oh, it's been a while since I call this one. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but, but the uh, the wrath of God abides upon it. Oh, to get to receive Christ, you got to believe. So he turns to Jairus. He says, believe. Well, Jairus just got an illustration of faith of a woman who was bleeding for 12 years. Say, well, how dare that woman interrupt what's going on? She didn't interrupt. She didn't plan on interrupt. Jesus had her interrupt. And maybe for Jairus. I don't know. I'm not going to say it is or not. He suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So Judas and all the, the disciples stay here. Peter, James, and John, and you know, this trio. Why? I don't know. Because he never says Andrew. They were the first four. They were the fishermen. So was Andrew. Where's Andrew? He cometh to the house of the ruler. So he hasn't even been at the house yet. He says, listen, guys, you stay here. Come on, Peter. Come on, James. Come on, John. And he sees a tumult, a kind of rough display, and then that weep and wail greatly. And some of these are, are higher. And they gathered the tears and they put them in bottles like he's flying in songs. And the much weeping, the much wailing you get, and as loud as you can get in the biggest show, well, this is how much we love this person. Catholics do the same thing. And when he was calm, into the house. 
He says unto them, why make ye this ado? And we, why, what's going on here? Imagine what Jesus would do if he came into the house of the, of the church building. What are you guys making this ado here? Why are all these eggs hidden? I knew he's going to do it. I knew he's going to say that. Why are you have presents for my birthday on the 25th? It wasn't my birthday, and I don't need copy paper in heaven. <laughs> and the damsel is not dead. Uh, well, the report is she's dead, but sleepeth. Now, that's what the Bible says about a dead person. So she is dead. You say, well, a Christian is dead. No, he's sleeping. <laughs> You're a fruitcake. No, I'm not a fruitcake. It's what Paul says in Thessalonians. You're not dead. You're just taking a good old nap. You, know, you, you, you figure, how, how stupid is that? Really? Come on, let's say. The Christians say, He's not dead. He's sleeping. All right, you want to know how stupid that is, really? Answer me one question. Now, I I buried one wife. Or one cremated. I buried one wife. I had to go to the funeral home and all that. I had to go to the last viewing, and we had an open casket service for Lisa. If she's dead, she's not dead. She was Jesus for that. If she's dead, why do they put a pillow? I asked the guy who knew my brother. I said, okay, I said, I said, you're giving me a great deal here. And he did. He gave me a great deal. I, I'm not complaining. I just have a – I like to ask questions when I don't know nothing. He goes, yeah, sure was. You got a pillow there. I said, yeah, everything comes with a pillow? He goes, yeah. Can I just ask a stupid question? He goes, what's that? Does the pillow cost any extra money? He goes, No. So if you're dead, why do they put a pillow in the coffin? Kind of interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> See, the Bible is right. It's true. And the world, they, they catch up later. They don't even know why they put a pillow in there. I bet you that guy's never had that question ever asked. I bet people, well, you know, I, I, you, you have a blue pillow. Can I use his favorite pillow from his bed? <laughs> and they never ask themselves, wait a minute. And I looked down in the casket, and, and I said, you know, they had her all dressed. I looked down, and they had shoes on her. I'm like, I said to myself, where's she going to walk? <laughs> What did you put shoes on her for? Anybody ever ask that? <laughs> and they laugh him to scorn. They're laughing him to scorn him. <laughs> you fruitcake. Who do you, she's dead. The, the people been here. They, there's no There's no breath. There's no heartbeat. Yeah, you're crazy. You, you just, you, Jesus, shut up. You hear him. She's, she's, she's sleeping. Go, hey, go in there, wake her up. <laughs> you see somebody saying doing that? Well, guess what? But when he, Jesus, had put them out. All right, everybody out of the house. Get out of the pool. Move out. Leave. You know, this is what he did with the temple. He made the rope of cords and he drove everybody out. <laughs> you know, the church says, all are welcome. And you, you're involved in scorning. You're involved. In, Jesus says, get out. What would Jesus do? He'd kick you out. He taketh the father, Jairus, and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, Peter, James, and John, and enter in where the damsel was lying. Okay. He took the damsel by hand and said unto her, Tethoa kuma, and I'm saying it wrong. Hey! Look at that! You learn. See, the Bible will let you know what foreign words you can need to know. 
You don't need to have, you know, in the original Hebrew, in the original Greek. And uh, 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 God will say, okay, here's a word. And look, what is, which is be interpreted, damsel, I say unto you, arise. There you go. And God gives you the definition without asking your scholarly fruitcake moron. Isn't that great? Now, you don't go up to a dead body and say, arise. A sleeping body. And straightway, the damsel arose. Look at that. She's obedient. And walked. I wonder if she had her shoes on. Maybe that's why they put shoes on the dead body. You know, it's thankful for the Jewish people. They don't do. Oh, why is it every time it comes to my head, it goes flying out like a bluebird? Um, doopy 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 doo doo. They don't do what they what the Gentiles do. You know, they remove the internal organs. They pull the brain out through the nose and. They don't do that. It'd be kind of great because a statement's going to be here in a moment. They leave the dead body as it is, the sleeping body as it is. And the word is on the tip of my brain and it says, I ain't coming out. For she was the age of 12 years. There are 12 tribes of Israel. The number of Israel is 12. Israel is unclean because she's bloody. And they're going to be bloody by the murder of Jesus. The book of Acts. And they're, they're dead. They're a sleeping nation. Like this girl. And they need Jesus to come and wake them up. And the scorners... And the religious, they're not there. The only ones that saw this girl arise is Jesus, Peter, James, John, Dyrus, and his wife. No, un <coughs> no unbeliever saw it. Do you realize when Jesus rose from the grave, he appeared unto the twelve, he appeared unto the women, he did not appear once. After his rest, he didn't appear to Pontius Pilate, he didn't appear to Herod, he didn't appear to the chief priest, he didn't appear to the, the Sadduc Sadducees and the Pharisees. And it's quite, if you were to take the scripture, kind of like when the rapture happens, the world may not even know what just one moment, you know, you're sitting at your desk and boom. One moment you're carrying a lunch tray, then boom, it's on the floor. One moment you're driving down the road and your car is in a telephone pole, they come in, they look in the car, and there's no one there. They go into the crib, there's no baby, no more. And they were astonished with great astonishment. That's the disciples. They. They don't ever get it. The disciples just saw the two maniacs of Gadara. And they've done resurrections. And they're still astonished. And he charged them straightly, forwardly, that no man should know it. Uh, wait a minute. When this girl walks out and goes down to the, get her the water at the well or goes to get the apples or the figs in the fruit market, they're going to know. Hey, that's Elizabeth. Yeah. She was dead. Uh... 
We thought she was dead. Well, maybe she wasn't dead. You know? And commanded that something should be given her to eat. Well, it is so great they didn't take her stomach out of her. Because Lazarus is risen from the grave, too, and the next thing you know, he's sitting at a meal, having a meal. Well, if you take the stomach out, <laughs> that word has not come to my, my, my tongue yet. Why do all the years... Now, Jacob was put to the embalmment, there it is, of the Egyptians by Joseph. Nowhere else for the Israelites has it been recorded of embalmment. I'm going to use that word as much as I can. Because later on, there's going to be a man, God, named Jesus, and he's going to start resurrecting people, and it'd be so great. Here, have a hamburger made of cow, so you can have that. It's not unclean. I can't. I ain't got no stomach. See, God already knew. God do the miracle of the Jews. Hey, don't embalm your people because there's, there's plenty of signs coming. Don't embalm Jesus. Just wrap them with the spices and the herbs and the, and the, the wrap. But don't embalm him because he's coming up. And the next thing you know, he's going to sit down with the disciples. They got any food? Yeah, we got some fish. Okay, glad I got my stomach. 